The St. Bernard is a very recognisable breed due to its famously large size and loving looks. These gentle giants are devoted companions, loyal to their family and kind in nature. In today's video we will be looking at the St. Bernard in comparison to the other well-known gentle giant, the Newfoundland. A beautiful, hard-working dog with a kind nature who can make a wonderful family companion. Welcome back to the Fenrir St. Bernard Show. It's great to have you here and if you're new, my name is Rachel and I'm the co-founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is here to help you raise wonderful pups of your own and to become perfect puppy parents to offer your dog a wonderful, healthy and fulfilled life. So to make sure that you never miss a future video about our four-legged best friends, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. So let's jump straight into today's video and find out which of these pups could be the best one for you. The St. Bernard and the Newfoundland have very different histories and origins. There is actually a lot of myth and legend surrounding the St. Bernard's history, but it is believed that these large dogs originated in Switzerland and were used in the Alps as search and rescue dogs. Traditionally, St. Bernard's were thought to have originated in a mon monastery hospice in the Swiss Alps in the 11th century, but the breed's first verifiable appearance at the monastery, or anywhere else for that matter, was around 600 years later. So there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding this, which has given space for myths and legends to be created about the dogs. Many researchers and experts believe that they were first intended as watchdogs at the monastery. But as they started to show their incredible rescue abilities, they were then used as mountain search and rescue dogs. To this day, monks will have a St. Bernard as a companion in the monastery, simply out of tradition. On the other hand, the Newfoundland comes from the Canadian province Newfoundland. They worked as helpers for the fishermen with their webbed feet and strong, muscular bodies making them the perfect dog for the job. However, there's actually a few different theories of how the Newfoundland was first developed. One is that this breed is a mix between the Tibetan Mastiff and the American Black Wolf. Another is that the Vikings left these dogs when visiting the New World in 1000 AD, and they were interbred then, bred with wolves in eastern Canada. The third is that they are the result of lots of European breeds crossbred in the 15th and 16th centuries, including the Portuguese water dogs and Mastiffs. The breed was registered by the American Kennel Club in 1879. St. Bernard's and Newfoundlands are incredibly different in their appearance, but more similar in respect to their size. Male Newfoundlands stand 28 inches tall, weighing 130 to 150 pounds and females stand 26 inches tall, weighing 100 to 120 pounds. Male St. Bernard's stand at 28 to 30 inches and weigh 140 to 180 pounds. The Saint's coat can be found as two different variations, short-haired and long-haired. The short-haired coat is smooth but very dense and is slightly bushy on the thighs, with a long-haired tail that becomes shorter towards the end. Then the long-haired coat has a slight wave to it, and the forelegs have feathering while the thighs and tail are very bushy. St. Bernard's can be a variety of shades of red with white, or white with red, and patches and markings on the dog can differ between individuals. The signature dark markings on a saint's head and ears resembling a mask are extremely desirable to many saint lovers. You should brush your St. Bernard a few times each week in order to remove loose hair and keep their coats looking healthy. Now the Newfoundland's coat is very different, especially in colour. They can be many different colours but the main ones include solid black, brown, grey and lancer, which is a white coat with black markings. Newfoundlands have a flat, water-resistant double coat, where the outer coat is coarse and long and the undercoat is soft and dense. They shed a moderate amount and with regular brushing a few times a week, their coat will maintain its soft and thick look. As I said earlier in this video, both of these large dogs are famously known as gentle giants and that could not be closer to the truth. Both breeds are kind and gentle natured dogs with a loving and affectionate personality and with plenty of patience for all members of the family, especially children. Newfoundlands are at their happiest when with their family and they should not be left on their own for long periods of time or be forced to live outside. They long to be close to their human companions and love the attention. As with all dogs, the Newfoundland and St. Bernard need to be socialised a lot from a young age in order to expose them to different 
people and situations to help them to grow up to be a well-rounded and confident dog. The St Bernard is similar in temperament to the Newfoundland in that they love being given attention, but are not actually as demanding. They are friendly and welcoming pups, but with a steady, kind and careful temperament, and with children specifically. Both are very aware and in tune with their owners, but can sometimes forget how big they are when they're focused on getting love and affection. These big dogs will put all their weight on you for a cuddle. As with a lot of larger and purebred dogs, the St Bernard and Newfoundland can be more prone to certain health conditions. The St Bernard can struggle with hip and elbow dysplasia, eye problems, epilepsy, heart conditions, allergies and stomach issues. The Newfoundland can be affected by Addison's disease, a hormonal condition. Eye problems, heart conditions, epilepsy, hip and elbow dysplasia, cancer, stomach problems, knee injuries and kidney disorders. Both dogs can be prone to similar health conditions, but they may also not get any serious problems. It's just very important as an owner to be prepared for any sort of health problem that could arise. Sadly, the larger a dog is, the life expectancy tends to be lower. The lifespan of the Newfoundland and the St Bernard is usually around 8 to 10 years. Both of these dogs are highly intelligent and can be easily trainable. However, due to the St Bernard's sometimes stubborn side, training needs to be extremely consistent and you'll need plenty of patience when training them. As both of these breeds are very large dogs, you should start training them from puppyhood, otherwise you may face issues with controlling them when they are much bigger and stronger. They are very eager to please their human companions, so lots of praise and treats will keep these dogs engaged with training. So, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you find it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and to make sure that you never miss a future video about our four-legged best friends, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. I can't wait to speak to you all again soon on the Fenrir St Bernard Show.